Dear colleagues, first of all, I'd like to express my gratitude to organizers, to Sergei, for the opportunity to talk to you. The topic of our presentation is difficult. It's a repeated uh, radio surgery after the exposed, radio, radio exposed lesions. Uh, first of all, we will try to show our results and to do um, comparisons. Let's start with definition. First of all, what is a local relapse? Local relapse, it's a relapse in the area uh, where, uh, that was exposed to radiation or was treated surgically. The distant metastases, uh, these are the new metastases, new lesions in the area where radiation was not done. And uh, we would like to talk about cellage therapy. It's a the therapy. Mm -hmm. And then uh, the goal of our study to evaluate effectiveness of repeated radio surgery of local relapses in patients with the brain metastasis. I will extend, enhance uh, this uh, understanding. First of all, it's local control. Uh, then we understand and we select uh, the group of patients where we conducted radio surgery and we have the relapse in the exposed area and we repeat radio surgery. It's a distant, it's a group of patients with, uh, with distant metastasis. The characteristics of a patient, it's presented here. I'm not going to delve uh, deeper here. It's 100 patients with repeated radio surgery. During the primary radio surgery, it was 427 uh, lesions. Then relapses happened in 132, and we treated them repeatedly. Two radio surgery was done on 190 nine patients, 25 patients had local relapses, 77 local relapses plus distant metastasis. So we conducted radiation of local lesions and distant metastasis. Three radio surgeries we performed on 30 patients. It's a group of 109 patients, eight, uh, four radio surgeries in eight patients, uh, two radio, uh, five radio surgeries in two patients and six radio surgeries in one patient. Uh, additional options after it's after it's repeated treatment, nearly surgery, 28 patients, stereotaxy radiotherapy, infractionation, seven patients, and WBRT, 23 patients. Target therapy was uh, done to 26 patients, every fourth patient, anti-tumor chemotherapy, 32 without treatment one and uh, 50 patients when didn't have the data. All these patients, uh, they received quite aggressive treatment. The uh, clinical characteristics of patients during the first and the second radio surgery. The first radio surgery, it's, it's uh, the left slide. It's uh, approximately the same. Uh, the time from the relapse, the median of following up, approximately one. Uh, uh, then uh, we have a radio surgery. We expose the margin. We have 20 grays for the repeated surgery. We decrease the dose. And uh, on the left, and the difference in volume that will in the first radio surgery and the second radio surgery. Uh, the overall survival is presented on this slide. The median 19.7 months, quite long median, but I'd like to point out that the median here of uh, survival is uh, defined by both uh, the any secondary local treatment and systemic treatment as to 
the local relapses. On the left slide, you can see uh, the local control of patients after the first radio surgery. I'd like to point out uh, that we analyze this, not just patients, but lesions. Uh, we have more than 2,000 lesion, uh, lesions and this local control uh, that is done after the first radio surgery. Please notice at the right slide where the lo we see the local control of the repeated radio surgery. We can see the increase in the number of relapses after the secondary radio surgery, a different picture. As to radionecrosis, uh, uh, it's a separate topic for discussion. Uh, we see the number of radionecrosis that uh, developed after the first radio surgery. Please notice 6 and 12 months after the first, uh, it's 2.4% uh, of patients. And please, uh, the number of radionecrosis in patients after the repeated radio surgery. Uh, the picture is completely different. To we say that radio surgeries and radio necrosis, uh, they uh, after the repeated radio surgery, the number of necrosis, radio necrosis is going up. It's difficult to talk about this topic. It's a more difficult part. Mostly uh, we see relapses and radionecrosis in one lesion. Uh, it's a typical example, typical case, how we deep diagnose and uh, radiate and uh, select the volume. It's a marginal relapse after the previous radio surgery. For deep diagnosis, so we uh, use PET with methionine and CT perfusion. There is, it's a PET with methionine. Uh, you can see very clearly the volume of radiation that was done was due to this relapse. One more topic. Oh, oh, we, oh, we exposed usually margin. We think that any uh, uh, stepping aside from the margin will increase uh, the number of radionecrosis and frequency of complications. What we do, what kind of task do we have? Everything, everything is done to define the prognosis factors after the local relapses, after the first radio surgery, and especially we are interested in the factors that, that can lead to the relapses after the secondary or repeated radio surgery. These volumes, these clinical factors, its type of the tumor, uh, the volume of the lesion, and for the first time we tried it to analyze it's in depth, uh, the histogram, uh, dose and volume. What does influence relapse? It's a marginal radiation. It's a minimum dose in the lesion. Uh, the dose in 95% of volume and a dose in 90% of the volume of lesion. We try to analyze what's the most important. Uh, single factor analysis, I will skip uh, summarizing results we see in multi sorry factor analysis. Uh, what happens in case of this uh, repeated radio surgery? The important factors for prognosis are the minimal dose of radiation, uh, more than 20 grades, and the volume of lesions less than one cubic centimeters. These are the factors of the better prognosis. Unexpectedly, the type of the primary tumor is not a defining factor for relapse. Although after the first uh, uh, radio surgery, it's a very important factor. But during the radiation, this factor is losing its importance. As to radionecrosis, uh, we can see that important factor for prognosis is dose, but here the type of tumor is a, a factor, defining factor for radionecrosis. In breast tumor and lung tumor and renal tumor, we see radionecrosis more uh, comparing to colorectal tumor. Uh, uh, 
First of all, it's our first attempt to build up uh, the prognosis scale of local relapses. We have something to think about, something to work on. These factors allow to have two groups of patients. If we distribute everything based on points, patients who have zero point, that is no prognostic good signs, or one point, you see the rate of relapses changes if at the time of 10 months there are identical indicators of local control. Starting from the 10th month, these curves uh, uh, divert and the risk of local relapses in 26% of patients and then it's difficult to control when there is a group of patients with higher risk of local relapse. Another situation is in patients where all prognostic factors are positive. Now let's talk about comparative aspects. Probably it's the most complicated part here. There are main series of radius surgery. Uh, so uh, this is intracranial control. If we talk about local relapses after uh, radio surgery, it is still difficult. Uh, but nevertheless, this table reflects the essence. We are interested uh, in the um, situation with radio surgery. Um, for example, we have 20 gray. We, we stick to the data given by the Earth at concerning 14, 80 gray. In the windows that we give at second radio surgery is 20 gray. Of course, we reduce the dose when there is big volume of radiation, but the mean of 20 gray. So we, we, we try to intensify the, the dose. What concerns local control? It's 73.9. This is mean uh, value. Of course, if we analyze the series if, and understand how we are different and why at radio surgery there is so high local control, so this is a separate story. As to survival rate, uh, it's 19.7 months. I think this is mean value. Repeats radio surgeries are the patients who are aggressively treated and chances for survival are quite high. Means uh, survival rate uh, within is 72 months. Radio necrosis is in 30%. Radio surgery is the situation when we create radio necrosis. In other stories, we have to discuss symptomatic radio necrosis. Sometimes in retrospective analysis, we cannot identify purely symptomatic radio necrosis. We might think that it doesn't exceed 10%, but as far as uh, uh, we use MRI and other methods, I'm giving symptomatic and asymptomatic radio necrosis. The results are quite uh, uh, well good and fit into the series. Uh, so I've already given this example, uh, this case. Uh, we reported about this case in other conferences. Now, uh, you see a patient, a female patient with breast cancer. She had multiple metastases, one in the brainstem, and she had repeat uh, radio surgery. If at early stages in 2013 we showed this slide as an exception, well, now we are going to demonstrate it as confirmation of the system being used in our center. So the first radio surgery, brainstem, then we, we gave 12 gray. Probably it was not the best solution. Now we would have given higher doses. Uh, we look at the brainstem and, uh, and toxicity limitations, but we gave 12 gray. Then she was followed up, and then uh, we visualized uh, relapse. 
and repeat radio surgery was performed in 9.7 months. Then further follow-up showed that continued growth plus 10 months from the previous radio surgery. There was repeat radio surgery of the second local relapse. That was actually the third radio surgery. Again, it's brain stem. Then we went to symptomatic. Uh, we, we had symptomatic radio necrosis. Uh, uh, she, re she received belacizumab. Uh, the images are not so good, but still you see the reduction of radio necrotic injury in the process of therapy with bevacizumab. The situation improved significantly. There were no lesions in the brain. Extracranial effect was achieved. She had lesion uh, uh, with uh, radionecrosis. Then she lived until third local relapse. Then uh, she was on bevacizumab. She, quite, she had quite stable neurological picture, but last relapse uh, made us use either symptomatic treatment or other types of treatment, but the relatives were for treatment, so it was fourth radio surgery, four radio surgeries for the brainstem. Uh, the last follow-up was in 50 months, so we controlled the lesion. At the same time, we had radio necrosis, relatively controlled by bevacizumab, but still progressing. Four years afterwards, she died on the background of intracranial progression. Uh, it's difficult to say whether it's success or not, but uh, with repeat radio surgeries, we can control such lesions. What do we have? Um, uh, this is preliminary. Re these are preliminary results. Of course, uh, repeat radio surgery is characterized by higher uh, um, rates of local relapses and uh, post-radiation complications. Uh, and uh, analysis of histogram uh, showed that minimum dose is more important predictum of local relapse uh, of radio necrosis. The volume of lesion and minimum dose are very important predictors. It's important to improve the prognostic scale for relapses to help us understand where uh, we should involve other methods of treatment such as radio surgery and hyper fractionation. It repeats radio surgery. We have to clearly plan the accompanying therapy. So the best option is bevacizumab. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions? We showed interesting data of multi-factor analysis where it was related to local relapse. Histological type didn't have an influence. Uh, did you compare, uh, did you match this data? Could it be the crowd that in the future dose could be well smaller or larger well there are two points that uh, were targeted first we have to specify prognostic factors the type of lesion yes it was unexpected uh, uh, tumors change after radiotherapy we have a different clinical picture uh, second shall we intensify the dose when we talk about local relapses so uh, we are a bit uncertain. On the one hand, to we'll look at the tolerance of surrounding tissues. Uh, 100 cubic meters shouldn't receive dose more than 10 grades. Important. But recently, we've had situations when we don't look at tolerance of adjacent uh, uh, tissue, and we intensify the dose. Uh, and it's not always that post-radiation uh, complications develop. And uh, uh, attitude to tolerance has changed. We tended to limit a lot. Uh, so now it's not just escalation or reduction of the dose, but we have to optimize. Sometimes we may achieve good results without int intensification of dose. Uh, the, uh, uh, 132 lesions. Uh, so the world shows different results. So we have to work further. We're not yet ready to present your final results. These are intermediate results. 
Very interesting presentation. Thank you. Question. Did you perform comparative analysis of the vo irradiated volume in development of radio necrosis? So, when we start analyzing the lesions, lesions, all these parameters are so interrelated. Uh, so when we say this is more important than that one, it's it's difficult. Uh, the volume of the lesion uh, impacts the dose, uh, so they're interrelated. When there is a multi-factor analysis, each time some part becomes more significant than another interrelated part. I cannot say that the volume of the lesion doesn't depend on, or doesn't influence the development of radio necrosis, but it influences the selection of the dose. What's important, the volume of the lesion or the dose? In this uh, case, minimal dose is more important parameter than the volume because we can give different minimal doses to uh, the volume. It's not so cl clear. In this case, minimal dose is more important than the volume, although they are interrelated. Uh, it's, it's difficult. Uh, this is preliminary data. There are much more questions that we ask to ourselves, that we ask ourselves. It's to accompanying therapy. There are no, uh, the standards do not imply bevacizumab to reduce radio necrosis. How do you cope with the situation? The, so those clinical recommendations that were written in 2016 uh, contain statements about bevacizumab. I think that in 2019, we'll update and bevacizumab proved to be the drug that reduces post-radiation complications well enough. But uh, when do we have to administer? Straight after or in the process or before when you understand that you are going to have and how long and how efficacious it will be depending on the period of uh, using. Now we prescribe it uh, the time when there is relapse as to dexamethasone, it's a standard situation. Uh, so we uh, administer it and maintain, and dexamethasone is given within a month, and with the reduction of the doses if the situation permits.